Osama bin Javed joins us live from Hitai on the Turkey-Syria border. Osama, do they have a successor yet? Well, that is the big question that faces this elusive organization now, which has now become a, a guerrilla movement uh, from a, a, an organization which used to carry its own caliphate. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi's death uh, has also come uh, as more leaders of ISIL have been killed in the last uh, few months and days. We've also heard reports from the Kurdish fighters saying that there was another incident uh, where a spokesman was allegedly killed near the Turkish border as well. So it is uh, an unfolding situation so far. We haven't heard from ISIL. Uh, analysts believe that it is going to be a situation where an, a successor will be announced, but it will not be somebody who is as well known as others have been because most of most of ISIL's leadership has been taken out. Uh, it is going to be interesting because ISIL again uh, has dis, uh, has franchised into many other areas uh, outside of Iraq and Syria. And you heard from Abu Bakr al Baghdadi in his message last month where he called for attacks from these sleeper cells, so to speak, across the globe. Uh, so I think there's a heightened security after Abu Bakr al Baghdadi's death in capitals across the globe and the world awaits if ISIL has a succession plan. Uh, also worth noting is uh, the developments that we've had from last night. Turkey has asked for an investigation into the movements of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi inside Syrian territory. Uh, Turkish president welcoming the move uh, that this is uh, going to be an, a great achievement in counter-terror operations between Turkey uh, and its allies, but again calling for an investigation because it wants to figure out how was Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi able to go Go from place to place, enter Syria, and then end up close to the Turkish border. Osama, thanks very much. Well, Baghdadi came from Iraq and he declared his so called caliphate in Mosul. Al Jazeera's Natasha Ghanem is there. Natasha, reaction where you are. We're in the old city of Mosul, Peter, and if you look around, there's devastation is still readily apparent. The suffering people are feeling is still quite acute. Behind me is the Grand Mosque of Mosul. You can see it was destroyed in 2017. The Iraqi government is accusing uh, ISIL of being the ones behind its destruction. But you might say that this mosque is a very strong symbol of where ISIL's reign of terror began. This is where in 2014, al-Baghdadi proclaimed that he was the leader of ISIL. The following month, ISIL began its uh, fight to uh, form a caliphate. It took control of the city and began its march across Iraq. Uh, we are speaking to people here in Mosul. One man said, we jumped for joy when we heard him. Uh, we heard that he was dead, but of course there's not much joy here in Mosul. ISIL may have been defeated, Baghdadi may be dead, but people here are living with the legacy, the psychological trauma of what happened here under ISIL. Uh, we were just speaking to these men right here. They're uh, standing in front of a bird shop. One man told us uh, that in 2017, his house was bombed. He lost his eight-year-old daughter. He says, I uh, have two sons born since 2017 when the city fell uh, back into the hands of the Iraqi government. And I can't find a job. My son has cancer. I can't get him health care. Another man said that everyone he knows in this city has suffered in some way at the hands of ISIL. He was reminding us how when ISIL initially came to Mosul, uh, they were using tactics uh, sort of gentle tactics to slowly lure people into the fold, promising jobs, uh, railing against the, the government, offering a better way of life. And then he said slowly, uh, bit by bit, things became more oppressive. Women were told they had to wear the hijab. Smoking was banned. People had to wear certain types of clothing. And then, of course, the rest is history. We know how ISIL terrorized the people of this city. Is that, Natasha, the place where he reportedly did his PhD in Islamic studies, which gave him, in his mind, I guess, religious credibility, which was something that he tried to utilize when he then went on to set up and run Islamic State? Look, there is so much unconfirmed information about uh, al-Baghdadi, and quite honestly, I think the people of Mosul want the focus to be on the suffering they continue to endure. I just want Ali, follow me, please, you to take a look. 
This is my uh, second time in the old city this year. This is what people are dealing with. These are homes. This is destruction that the Iraqi government has been unable to help repair. People are literally living in the rubble of these buildings. They don't have basic services. As you heard, they don't have jobs. And this is what uh, the people of Mosul are looking for. They're looking for a path forward, a way past ISIL. But again, as I mentioned, Peter, they are still very much suffering. So while Baghdadi may in fact be dead, they know all too well this does not mean an end to this group. It's thought that there are ISIL sleeper cells across Iraq. We know that they have been launching attacks in the country. And there is a real concern, according to one analyst, that now that Baghdadi has been killed, that ISIL sleeper cells may in fact try to launch additional attacks in the coming weeks to avenge his death. Natasha, thanks very much.